Thank you very much. Do we share the screen or? I mean, I love these videos, but it's, by the way, from, from Terry Dresden. It's close enough? <laughs> Good. Hopefully they'll hang over. Oh, nice. Netflix. Nice kickoff. Okay, thank, thank you very much. much. Can I use this one as well? Okay, fine. Yeah, good morning everyone. Hope everybody is able to hear me. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here today for me and talk a little bit uh, about our research from Theo Dresden. So like you can already see here, we have a small panel bring with, uh, bring with us. And so I want to talk today about our research topic, the uh, thin glass composite panel and uh, how do we use the seed um, flex spot for it. So I would dive into it with a short outline for my today's presentation. I would like, with a sh uh, like to start to um, introduce you a little bit uh, about thin glass and our research about it, as well as the sandwich theory, which is a basic um, uh, mechanical concept of the composite element. And then I will continue with uh, some insights into the digital design and digital fabrication and uh, would like to sum up the, uh, with some mechanical testing what we are doing and current and future research. So let me start with thin glass. I don't want to dive too deep into explaining thin glass today, but what is in particular very interesting about thin glass is that what's the biggest challenge from thin glass is, is um, at the same time the biggest opportunity. So we have a very lightweight building material uh, which is at the same time very flexible, which can be good or bad, depending on what you want to do with that. So uh, let's start with some usual um, glass sizes. So in the glass industry, you're starting with 3, 4 millimeter, 6 or 8 millimeter are more often used. And we try to uh, leave this comfort zone and want to use very thin sheets of glass. So 2 millimeter, 1 millimeter or even 0 0.5 millimeters. So the benefit out of it is actually that we have a very low um, uh, surface weight, so we can construct very lightweight composite elements or facade elements. And uh, because we save so much uh, materials, we are able to lower our footprint to energy, resources and of course waste. And another opportunity is the high shapeability of the glass, so we try to go in the future to curved panels as well, which is quite difficult in the glass industry uh, right now. So to sum up the first slide, I would say it's a big opportunity, but at the same, a big challenge because glass this thin is so flexible and you can bend it that easy. Uh, so we need to think about a safe construction. So we have basically the challenge, we have a material with a very high material stiffness, but at the same time, a very low um, uh, geometrical stiffness. So because of the low moment of inertia and our idea is actually to have a very thin glass and we separate it by some kind of core and uh, let's assume that we can do that without adding much uh, material or much weight to it then we have uh, extremely uh, high benefit in uh, uh, the stiffness of the whole panel. So when we look into the cross-section, it's quite nice to see uh, how the forces are divided into such a panel because it's uh, very um, important for the later design. So we have some normal forces um, in the cover layers, so in the glass, and the core and the adhesive joint between glass and core is uh, mostly loaded to shear force. So what is the concept? You can uh, already see it here on the rendering here. Uh, we have two cover, uh, cover blades uh, out of thin glass and we have a core structure which is adhesively bonded to the glass. And for this core structure we uh, use additive manufacturing and because we are coming from the building industry we need big additive manufacturing so that's the reason why we use the flexbook. And here you can see a rendering probably close to this one so um, that was the first idea and uh, yes. I would like to talk a little bit um, about the digital design and the digital fabrication uh, approach we are using or that we want to use in the future. 
So the traditional approach is something looking like um, you get some data from an architect or something um, in the building industry and then you make your design for the facade. And when you make your design, you uh, will come at one point to some engineering uh, stuff uh, regarding mechanics, thermal performance of the, of the facade and maybe some shading features. And for all these uh, uh, things you have different tools to use. But it's not a really closed loop actually. And then you go to the preparation and uh, you want to try to digital fabricate it with the, um, with the Flexbot in the end. So you will come up with very different tools you use. So you need, need probably one tool for design, you need another one for your mechanical, for your finite element uh, analysis, you need a different one for thermal, different maybe for shading, and then as you probably know, a different one for preparation, the print path. Um, so that's a quite long way, uh, and our idea is actually to have our data, we make our design and all the tools they are in a very close loop around the design. So we include our analyzers, so our engineering directly into design. And I want to include the preparation, so the print, press, uh, print path uh, programming into the preparation as well. So we can get uh, much faster and more flexible um, to the fabrication. And this I can do uh, in one program. I personally use Grasshopper for that. And uh, yeah, maybe here already uh, some videos for the uh, programming. So I am basically programming the print, print path itself. So I have uh, some, um, yeah, some million po points uh, I use and then I have the coordinates and I can create my G code out of it. And that is uh, how it looks like uh, at Terry Dresden at our institute. So left you can see the digital model of the extruder and right you see the robot moving and uh, yeah making the element you can see here so this is uh, footage from the last week and I really like that it's always quite satisfying to look yes after digital design we got to the digital fabrication and we process we try to include some more processes into um, our approach and uh, we want to use the robot for that so we start with some additive manufacturing here, a little bit older uh, videos from our honeycombs. Um, yes, so it, everything started uh, with the additive manufacturing. Then we need some surface preparation because we want to glue it to glass. So we have, or we want to have a very high surface quality. So we uh, mill it flat and then we will go ahead with some adhesive application and here you can see a video but it's very very slow and uh, looks almost like a picture but we try to use the robot for this application for the adhesive as well and in the end we have uh, the assembly process here is it's still a time lapse from the adhesive application i know you don't like when people are uh, going inside the cell but <laughs> sorry for that but in the very end, you see that we have uh, the, the, the glass laying beside our print and uh, as soon as we applicated the, uh, the adhesive, we set down the, um, the glass and then we cure it by UV curing at the moment. Okay, let's uh, have a look into some mechanical testing because uh, we want to use it in the facade and we want to be very efficient. We want to save material, we want to save glass. And so we have to know, okay, what can we reach actually with this kind of uh, setup? And this is our test setup. So we have a two, uh, almost two by almost one meter sized honeycomb uh, pattern. Uh, we have a 14 millimeter core and on each side still three millimeter, which is quite thick at the moment. Uh, so we uh, want to definitely go a little bit slimmer. Um, and then we have the picture on the right that uh, is a facade test set up at our institute. So we can simulate wind pressure in, uh, with it. So on the right hand side you see this tube and there we can load the element with uh, wind pressure or we can suck the wind out of it or the, the air out of it. And for measurement we glue the, um, a thin film of it to uh, make the analysis. So we are using a DIC system, a digital image correlation system. 
And that leads me to some uh, results. So we can uh, measure all the deformation we get uh, from the wind load, and then we can compare it with the finite element uh, uh, method. And there we can see, OK, we have some slightly deviations between it, but uh, we are still working on the finite element um, system. And, but what is very important is that we have a, at a very high pressure, 4,000 pascals, which is quite a lot, uh, only a deformation from 2.3 millimeter. And this compared to more traditional um, glass sizes, um, it is the same or approximately the same stiffness as you would use a 12 millimeter thick monolithic glass pane, or maybe a little bit more important for the facade and IGU and insulating glass unit, where you have a 10 millimeter glass sheet, then you have 60 millimeter air in between, and then again 8 millimeter uh, glass. And that saves a lot of uh, glass already, so up to 70% in this case. And I think the potential is much higher because we can exploit this sandwich effect much more when we uh, make bigger cores or higher cores and uh, use uh, thinner glass. In, in this example, it was uh, still 3 millimeters. Um, yeah, what's our current research? Uh, really like this picture. Um, Basically, what you see is the bigger brother from this one. We had it on an exhibition at GlassTech uh, two months ago. And there's some testing in the glass industry where you simulate someone is falling against or in a glass element. And we tried to simulate it here with this pendulum test. And like you see, the result wasn't that good. So we still have to do some research in the performance of the core, how we can make it more durable and more safe uh, for the use in the facade. And so the mechanical performance is um, it's very important for us, but as well we have to do some in, uh, investigations into the glass itself. So we want to try to laminate it, we want to try to temper thin glass, so there are some challenges to go. And what I really like to do is um, some uh, digital fabrication stuff in Grasshopper. So you can see on the left hand side a completely parametric model of a facade with any kind of pattern. And the interesting thing is that this pattern is directly sliced into the G-code and is uh, transferred to the robot design. And because of, thin, uh, of the thin glass, you can try curved um, uh, structures. So you can print a curved structure. In this case, we uh, imagine something like an adaptive print table for it. Uh, we don't have it yet, but uh, maybe in the future we want to extend our system. And so it's a very... Um, um, uh, live design and you can parametrically um, change your design according to your needs uh, you have. And next steps is of course to implement an insulating glass unit that we can have some insulating stuff. I really would like to thank our funding. It's uh, always good to have that, especially to finance such a mach machine or uh, our project and really like to uh, thank uh, our staff at the Institute who were involved into uh, the project. And I would like to thank you for your attention with some pictures of our bigger brother at the class tech. So this is a two meter by uh, 160 in size, so a little bit bigger. And I think we still can extend it with our machine and resin. Um, so yeah, thank you very much for your attention.